What's up, nerds? Today we're gonna make some Hitachi White using the Cool Iron Works 25 kilowatt. Basically, it is black magic, and we're gonna melt a bunch of this powdered steel and a bunch of this ingredients and make it into some awesome low alloy, high carbon steel. We weigh everything out on a food scale, and once it's weighed, we put it in the little crucible and we let the 25 kilowatt eat. Now you're gonna watch me measure stuff because that's super exciting. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is figure out what our weights and measures are and what our projected carbon content's gonna be. If I flip this around, I don't know if you can see this or not, we're shooting for 1.4% carbon, uh, and the total should be 1.41 carbon, and uh, there's very little to no alloy in it, except for manganese and some trace elements of sulfur and phosphorus. Our manganese will be 0.29, which should be very close to being in line with Hitachi White, which I think is like 1.25 in that range, and 1.4% carbon. So what I use is I use this little food scale that I picked up from Goodwill for six bucks, set it on grams, and then we measure what we're gonna use. And for this particular recipe, we're gonna use 444 grams of powdered 1095. The wind can cooperate. So we'll just measure this out. Flip this around so you guys see how just using a coffee filter because it's cheap and disposable and I was able to rip it off from the Coal Iron Works kitchen area along with the spoon, which maybe I'll wash when I get back. I don't, I don't know. Let's see how I feel when I'm done with this. 444 grams, here we go. Put it in here. Into this cute little crucible which should almost fill it, but not entirely, I hope. There we go. You know what, let's do this. I'll put it in here and we'll mix it in here. And then we'll add it to this crucible later, which will make it interesting. Uh, and we need 2.1 grams of graphite. Now we're gonna add pure graphite. Now, I had the hardest time wrapping my head around using pure graphite because it's like melting temperatures like 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm like, how can you possibly use pure graphite and make it work? But it's not an issue of melting temperature, it's an issue of having it dissolve, much like salt in room temperature water. And I put way too much in. There we go. Two grams of carbon source. We're gonna put it into this crucible here. I'm gonna take the spoon that I ripped off from their kitchen area here and we're just gonna make sure it's well mixed. The super cool thing about using the induction furnace for doing crucible stuff is that the magnetic fields will stir everything for you. So you can look in there if you don't have a top on it, you can actually see your melt charge spinning from all the electrical magnetic field. Super cool. Okay, so we have the crucible loaded. We have it sealed, everything's mixed. We're gonna use this uh, rather heavy die from a 25 ton and we're gonna put it on the pedal and hold that sucker down. We're gonna run a timer for five minutes. Let me get that set up. My experience has been in the past about a minute and a half, it'll be like pure liquid. We're gonna let it run for an additional few minutes to make sure all the air bubbles are out. Okay, so what we've done is we've now run it for 10 minutes at full amperage, and then after 10, we've turned it down to half amperage and ran it for another 10. Uh, what we're trying to do there is equalize the material inside so it doesn't have any gas remaining in the ingot. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it on here, let that baby cool down a little bit, knock the lid off, get it in the gas forge, and then we're gonna forge it out on the, the hammer, hopefully, if all things work well. If not, we'll fake it, whatever. Got 
to cool down just a little bit more so it can shrink away from the sides. Absolutely important and underrated about the 25 kilowatt or any induction for that matter. Doing crucible steel is look how smooth the top of that piece is. And that's with no glass. All we did was use some furnace cement and a brick to keep the oxygen out. Nothing fancy, no crazy vacuum chamber. That's some great steel. Pumped about that. Look how clean that is. some actual woots, or at least try and get some carbide forming elements into it. Uh, we're going a little bit different route because this has all been about a different route today using the 25 kilowatt induction. Um, so different, so fast, so easy. My gosh, I can't even begin to tell you how much easier this is. The, so what we're going to do is we're gonna use very chemically pure. We have uh, electrolytic manganese, which is like 99.9% .9 pure. We have electrolytic iron, which is 99.9% .9 pure. We have uh, six grams of graphite, and then we're gonna throw in the secret ingredient. We're gonna throw in some titanium to try and get some titanium carbide going in this piece. Um, it's the wild card. Um, if you guys watch Always Sunny in Philadelphia, this is definitely the wild card. So we'll figure out how this is gonna go. I'm gonna measure a few of this uh, 440 grams of this electrolytic iron and uh, we'll get this thing loaded up. try this at home. Uh, I want everybody in the country to buy one of these and then we can all collaborate and make really awesome steel. Um, so it's not just me nerding out in my garage by myself making this stuff at 11 o'clock at night listening to air supply or whatever. So anyway, yeah, that's my closing remarks. Um, super thankful to Cole. They invited me out here today to make this stuff. Um, hopefully I wasn't too obnoxious or maybe, maybe it wasn't obnoxious enough. I don't know. But um, yeah, Super cool, I wish I could do this stuff all the time. If you wanna find me on social media, I'm at Burning Sky Forge on Instagram and Brett Onik on Facebook. Um, I'm just an average dude, so if you have questions, you know, send them to me. I can't guarantee that I'll have any good answers, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well, and thanks again to Cole. See you guys.